Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. Now the Galaxy S9 has been shipping and people around the world are receiving their units. Now some people are receiving uh, phones with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 in it and some people are receiving devices with the Exynos 9810 in it. And the question is this, Samsung promised lots of performance gains, particularly with the single threaded performance. And this is what we're trying to find out. Did Samsung actually deliver on those promises? Well. Let me explain. Okay, so just a quick refresher. The Exynos 9810 has got, is an octa-core processor, 64-bit ARM processor with four Cortex-A55 cores for the energy efficiency and four Samsung in-house developed M3 cores for the high performance. It's also got a ARM Mali uh, G72 18-core GPU. Now, in a very rough kind of way, both the Snapdragon 845 and the Exynos 9810 are of very similar performance, certainly in data their usage, you're not going to notice that one is faster than the other in terms of the CPU power. But when it comes to just doing, at, looking at those numbers, doing those benchmarks, let's see what we were able to find out. Now I've run the standard benchmarks and 2.2 Geekbench, 3D Mark and so on, and I've plotted some graphs that compare the S9 with a Snapdragon in it to the S9 with an Exynos in it. And I think you're gonna find the results quite interesting. So the first test is GFX Bent Manhattan running at 1080p off screen, so it doesn't matter what display is attached to the, the CPU. And you can see here that the Snapdragon 845 manages 61 frames a second, very respectable score there. But the Exynos 9810 only manages 47 frames a second. Now, of course, 47 frames a second on such a high performance test is very reasonable and it's better than what we were getting last year. But clearly here, the, uh, the GPU in the Snapdragon 845 is superior. And in fact, we're gonna see that uh, shown time and time again uh, over the next few benchmarks. So now looking at the T-Rex uh, test also part of GFX Bench, also running at 1080p off screen. This time the difference wasn't quite so remarked. 150 frames per second for the Snapdragon, 146 frames per second for the Exynos. Of course, the T-Rex test is a lot of a less demanding test because you can see here we're looking at double the frame rate on both devices to start with. So this is a, a less of a challenging test and they're both getting good scores, but still the Snapdragon are out ahead there. And then when you look at 3D Mark, which really is a very kind of a heavy uh, GPU test, we can see that the Snapdragon 845 scored 4,695, and quite a way down is the Exynos with 3,343. So again, a big marked difference there in the GPU performance. Now the Antutu test is a combination of GPU and CPU. So let's see how these two devices fare in Antutu. Well, as you can see here, the Snapdragon 845 scores 266,559 compared to 250,512 on the Exynos 9810. So again, clearly the, uh, the 845 has better and 22 scores. It's not as a big difference as we saw with some of those other uh, GPU benchmarks, but still a, a big lead there, a big win from the Snapdragon. I really hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, I'd like to remind you there is now a separate Gary Explains YouTube channel and there I cover lots of technology outside of mobile. So if you're interested, go over to youtube.com slash Gary Explains and I'll see you there. Now where Samsung really promised a performance gain was actually in the CPU, not in the GPU. In fact, they were claiming 40% greater performance for multi-core tests and an up to double performance for a single core test. So I ran Geekbench on both devices using its single core test and its multi-core test. And let's see what results I found. Well, now the table is completely turned. As you can see, the Exynos scored 3,747, which is way ahead of the uh, Qualcomm, which scored 2,426. Now, they were promising a, a doubling of performance compared to the uh, M2. Now, the M2, that's the process you find in phones like the Note 8, was scoring around 2,000 for its single score test. So we would be expecting numbers of around 3,900, maybe 4,000. Now, they've actually given us an 85% uh, increase in performance, which is significant. It's not what they were advertising, but it is significant. 85% increase in performance is remarkable, and it does blow the Snapdragon version here out of the water. But remember, this is pure CPU testing. 
And a similar situation here with the multi-core tests. We didn't get to go over 9,000 on the multi-core test. We got 8,946, and that's compared to 8,116 for the Snapdragon. So still the winner there is the Exynos for CPU performance, both single core and multi-core, and it is significantly faster than the uh, Snapdragon 845. But in the GPU department, the 845 seems to be the winner. So what does this all mean? Well, what it means is that actually in an average day usage, if you're doing G email and then you're kind of playing a bit of a games and then you're watching some video, you know, you're just mixing it up, then you're not going to notice the difference on, on any of these things. If you're going to be playing games, then it looks like uh, the North American market is doing much better by having the Snapdragon. If you are doing just general usage, maybe web page bra uh, rendering and those kind of things, then it looks like the Exynos is gonna be a bit faster. But as I said, at the end of the day, these scores are so high, particularly if you compare them to phones of not just last year, but maybe let's say two years ago, these are just so high now that you're not gonna notice any difference. But if you like being kind of a, you know, a benchmark fanatic, you like to see what those numbers are, then this has shown us. Then they've made big, big inroads in single core performance on the Samsung. And I hope that next year in the M4, we're gonna see even bigger performance leaps. And maybe in terms of CPU performance, the Samsung devices can get close to or even beat what Apple are doing. In terms of GPU, well, things are looking pretty healthy on both platforms. I'm Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. I really do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. You know the drill, please subscribe, please hit that bell notification icon, please share on social media, please use the comments to tell us what you think about these benchmark results. And that's it, I'll see you in the next one.